It didn't. And I know that a lot of people have an instinctive mistrust of these polls. But actually, if we look back specifically at leadership elections, uh, the polls have been really quite accurate in the past. Back in 2019, Boris Johnson was consistently ahead in those polls and, and he won. Uh, Theresa May didn't have much chance to prove that she was ahead, but she won amongst MPs. But most Peculiarly, actually, probably 2015, when Jeremy Corbyn was leading in all of the polls, to the much, much to the surprise mm. of the commentators, and everyone was sort of thinking these polls must be off. Jeremy Corbyn will never win, and then of course he goes and wins the Labour leadership. Interestingly, speaking to pollsters about polling political parties, it sounds like it's a difficult thing to do, but actually. Political party members are probably overrepresented in most polls of normal people because the kind of people that might want to respond to polls are more likely to be politically, politically engaged. engaged. Yeah. Exactly. So these are probably quite accurate, which takes us on to last night and probably explains a lot of the behaviour of Rishi Sunak. He was, he was really keen to get in on every point, didn't let Liz Truss finish a lot of sentences, really trying to put his points across and in many ways cutting across Liz Truss. That's the behaviour of someone who feels like they really need to make a breakthrough, perhaps need to put off their opponents. Something needs to shift in this debate. And now uh, there have been a couple of polls out now, both of Opinium and of YouGov, but crucially both of those polls, while they might be more mixed amongst the general public, amongst Conservative voters and Conservative members, it looks like Rishi didn't do enough. So what happens next, though? Because we've got another debate uh, this evening hosted by The Sun. We've got the first actual Conservative Party hustings mm. on Thursday. I, I mean, these arguments, we've, we, we've not, we know where they stand on tax and the economy. Mm. I mean, it will be interesting to see, actually, whether this debate tonight moves on to talk about other issues that actually haven't cropped up on the ITV Channel 4 or BBC debate, whether that is on housing, whether it's on migration, mm. whether it is on uh, a whole swathe of other stuff that, that's affecting the economy. I mean, or are we just going to get slightly more intense debates all the time on the same issues. Yes, I think people were surprised a little bit last night that migration didn't come mm. up. It was one of those issues that was polled by opinion in the snap poll after because they expected it to come out, but it didn't uh, come up in that debate. So because the questions are being chosen by Sun newspaper readers tonight, perhaps that might be one that comes up. But yes, I do think that we are going to start to see this become a bit of a Groundhog Day <laughs> contest. Because I think these, we might already be there. Because there's not only uh, this... Uh, uh, further some debate. There's also a planned Sky News debate. No, uh, no doubt more debates. And of course, those 12 regional hustings hosted by the Conservative Party as well. This is going to become a contest of very rehearsed arguments, hearing the same lines again and again and again. And for a lot of people, they might switch off after a couple of weeks because it's going to sound incredibly samey. Unless there's some big deus ex machina situation, we're not going to see a big shift. So really, in the next week, probably two weeks. It's the time that Rishi Sunak has to turn things around if we believe these polls. Yeah. He's got to make a big moment and that hasn't been forthcoming so far. And just finally, Tom, I mean, let's look even beyond that to September. Let's work on the assumption that, that, that Liz Truss wins. I mean, it will be after what is turning into quite a divisive campaign. Mm. Last night they both suggested they would work with each other. Do you really think that's possible, given the fundamental disagreement on the biggest issue this country is facing, i.e. what the hell to do about the economy? Well, let's look back to 2019. Boris Johnson actually offered Jeremy Hunt a position in his cabinet. Jeremy Hunt, who was then, of course, Foreign Secretary, was offered the demotion of Defence Secretary. Still a relatively important job. Uh, Jeremy Hunt turned that down because he didn't want to leave a great office of state. Now, it's almost unimaginable that Liz Truss would offer Rishi Sunak the post of Chancellor in her administration. They are so fundamentally, uh, diametrically opposed in terms of what